I have used so many Sony cameras from the A7 series over the years and all of them were shooting 8-bit internally. That's why I know how painful it is to color grade an 8-bit footage. However, you can get really great results with the powers of DaVinci Resolve. I have been asked before for this tutorial by you guys and finally I was able to do it now. So today we will take a look at how to color grade an 8-bit footage, uh, whether it's as log 2 or if it has a different kind of color space, it doesn't really matter. There are a couple of things we need to understand about 8-bit footage. It is more difficult to edit these type of footages because we do not have enough color information comparing to 10-bit or 16-bit RAW images. So we won't have much flexibility when we are grading. For this reason, if your white balance and exposure is correct when you're shooting, your color grading workflow will be much easier later on. So let's get into it. I've got this clip of a model. It's a really bright sunny day. Before I start adding my notes, I will change my timeline color space. Go into your settings, go into color management, under timeline color space, choose DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate and for the output color space select Gamma 2.4. Okay, let's build our node structure. First I will create seven nodes, then another one and then I will add two parallel nodes to this and then we will have two, three, four more nodes. Let's clean up our workspace. I know it's it kind of looks confusing but every node has a purpose. Our first node is going to be CST, our 13th node is going to be another CST. I will explain that why in a second. My second node is going to be white balance, third one is going to be for the highlights, the fourth one is going to be balance, fifth node is going to be contrast. In this node I will write split tone, the seventh node is going to be my saturation. These three layered nodes are going to be for the power windows. You don't have to use all of them, it is for the particular places on your footage that you want to enhance or make changes. But again, you don't have to use every one of them. This note is going to be my look. After the last CST are going to be for the whatever effects you want. You're going to put them in these notes like a sharpen or film grain or bloom, halation, whatever you want. Our note structure is ready. Now let's start with the color space transformation. The first CST is going to be, I will select Eskamut tree and this is an SLAC 2 footage. Then for the output color space, I will select DaVinci White Gamut and output gamma is going to be DaVinci Intermediate. Then we will move on to the other color space transform. Now we will transforming it from DaVinci White Gamut to Rec 709. And all the grading stuff is going to be in between of these two color space transform nodes. So on the second CST, we will select DaVinci White Gamut for the input color space, Intermediate for the input gamma, Rec 709 for the output color space, and Gamma 2.4 for the output gamma. Okay, I'm doing it this way because I want to take advantage for all the information that I can get. Let's move on. After the color space transformations, I will go into my balance and I will use offset, gain, gamma and lift controls to balance the footage, make sure nothing is clipping and I am also looking at my scopes. I will give a little bit contrast in this node. This is before, this is after. So and then I will go into the white balance and I will adjust it with the temperature and tint settings. I will leave the highlights node for now and I will move on to contrast. In this node I will go into my curves, I will activate the editable splines, then I will create an S-curve with the shadows and with the highlights like this. First I will go too much and then I will pull it back. This is before, this is after. Maybe a little less. Yeah, this looks okay. I actually have a separate node for the saturation, but again, I will increase the saturation just a little bit in this node, but I'm not going to use the default saturation. I will go into the HDR wheels and I will increase the global saturation. This will give much better results. This is before, this is after. Let's close down this window. Let's move on to the split tone node. Now I will create a little 
color contrast. I will push my offset into blue and then I will counter that with my gamma wheel. I will push it into more orange and red area. This is before, this is after. This will clean up so much of that warm color. But actually, I don't want her skin tone to fade that much. So I will go into my log wheels and then with my mid-tone, I will push more orange into the mid-tones. This is before, this is after. Yeah, looks a lot better. Let's go into the saturation now. The most important thing when you are color grading a 8-bit footage is that you shouldn't use qualifier tools at all because if you try to select something it will end up looking like this because you don't have enough color information instead using qualifiers you can use curves and select hue versus hue or hue versus saturation. You need to select range of colors. You cannot manipulate colors through qualifiers. So avoid using qualifiers. As you can see, it, it looks kind of blocky. The selection is not going to be really good. Look at the skin. Some part of it is actually picking up, but most of it kind of looks like blocky. And this won't give you a good result. So instead of doing this, I will reset this node. Let's see where we are. Go into the saturation node right click on the node and go into color space and select hsv then again right click and go into the channels deactivate the channel 1 and channel 3 and then go into your color wheels into your primaries with gain and gamma sliders you can control your saturation much easier and much more accurately this is before this is after look at it look at how much it actually gives that color back but if you did try to qualify and then give it a saturation, your image would be break because it's really easy to break an 8-bit footage. For the power window nodes, I will just create a window. I will give it a feather around her face like this. Let's give it a little bit offset just to give the attention more into her face. This is before, this is after. And we covered some of the shadow areas around her face. I'll give a bit more saturation. This looks really great, even for now. And we didn't even create a look. Let's move on to our look nodes. There are multiple ways to create a look. And one is that you can go into your hue versus saturation and select different colors and with the input hue slider. Select the specific color of your footage and give a little bit more saturation. And then you can go into hue versus hue. Don't touch any color related to her skin tone because you don't want to mess with that. So you can select blues or yellows and then change those values to create a different type of look. So you can take your blues and make it more teal. And this is before, this is after. It's just instantly creating a different vibe. But when I do that, we get so much teal in the shadows. So you can counter that by going into log wheels This is before, this is after. You can do the same thing with the greens before, after. As a last step, we have a note for the highlights. So she has a really highlighted areas on her face and it's creating like really hard edges under her eyes, on her nose. So we can get rid of that by going into highlight note. You can only use qualifiers with this because I'm not picking any color. I'm just going to pick the highlighted areas. Just select the highlighted areas and then go into your primaries, decrease your highlights like this. Go too much and pull it back. This is before, this is after. It will kill the harshness of that light on her skin. After this, you can drop any effect that you want. It's kind of blurry for my taste. Uh, I will give a little bit of sharpening. Then let's add a film grain. I will select 35 millimeters. So you can save it as a still and then apply to your other footages. You can change anything by going into all of these settings because everything is really organized and separate. Let's look at it from the beginning. This is our log image. This is S-Log2. First, I added the CSTs and then I went into my balance and balanced the image. I did my white balance. Then I went into my contrast settings and then I added the split tone, then my saturation to give more attention to her face I created a power window then I went into my look gave different kind of colors on the background if you have like a plugin like the enhancer you can use that as well finally I decreased the highlights then I added sharpen and film grain 
so now we have this okay guys i hope that wasn't too much if you learn the basics of that note tree you can implement that into any project of yours just try it with any footage of your own make sure to share that with me i will be really appreciated if you have any questions any comments drop it down below if you like this video give it a thumbs up thank you for watching until the next video take care